Richard Tice has sensationally declared full-scale war on the Tories after an alarming war of words broke out over the weekend. So the Conservative Party chairman, Richard Holden, branded the Reform UK leader a threatening bully. But when it comes to the polls, Reform are winning the battle, it seems, with the latest survey showing that Tice's party could cost the Tories a whopping 50 seats at the next general election. And a new report out today has shed some light on Reform UK's success. They're tapping into the public concerns, shock horror, who'd have thought it, about immigration. Well, I'm joined now by the man behind that report, the pollster, the academic, Matthew Goodwin. Matt, thank you very, very much. Look, I'll ask you straight, who is going to win this war between Reform and the Tories? Well, look, I mean, if Rishi Sunak and Number 10 don't get that uh, reform party vote down in the polls, then Richard Tice and Nigel Farage and reform, they're going to end up costing the Conservatives the next election. The reality, Patrick, is they're picking up about a third of the people who voted Conservative in 2019. They're ahead of the Conservatives among working class voters, Northerners, uh, men. Uh, so this is a revolt on the right that's getting stronger, not weaker, as each day replaces the last. And immigration is the big battleground as far as you're concerned, and the Tories are losing that to reform, are they? Yeah, we've just done a survey with the Legatum Institute of 3,400 Reform Party voters. These are people who are planning to vote reform at the general election. We just asked them, what are your top concerns? Number one, stopping the small votes. Number two, lowering the overall level of immigration in the country. And those two immigration concerns are, are well ahead of anything else about the economy, about the NHS. And then we said to those voters, look, what would bring you back to the Conservatives? And well, for most of them, um, nothing will bring them back. I mean, that's the real problem for Rishi Sunak. But for 40% of them, Patrick, they said, look, if the Conservatives make a big, bold offer on immigration, maybe they, maybe they offer a national referendum. Maybe they say, we'll reduce net migration to 100,000 a year instead of 700,000. They might consider voting Conservative again. But look, this is bad news for Rishi Sunak. These Reform Party voters, they look pretty sticky to me. Well, a few hours ago, it emerged that Reform UK have pledged to hold a referendum on net zero. Do you think that's another thing to make Rishi Sunak worried? Well, look, I mean, net zero, there's no question that Reform voters don't like net zero policies. In our own survey, we found seven in ten of them just think that net zero policies have made, made Britain a worse place to live. I think the problem for Reform is out there in the country, net zero isn't a game changer in the way that, say, immigration is. 80% of all seats in Britain, Patrick, have majority support for lowering migration. Net zero, yes, it annoys some people. It annoys you know, people dealing with the ULES cameras. Mm. It annoys people changing the pumps and the cars. But it's not a game changer issue in the way that mass immigration is. So if I was Richard Tice or if I was advising Richard Tice, I'd be saying, actually, there's only three issues you should be talking about. Immigration, immigration, immigration. OK. Um, again, over the weekend, I saw some polling that appeared to suggest that maybe Rishi Sunak would lose his own seat. I mean, do you think that that is even a possibility? Well, this is a big MRP poll, Patrick, that we saw. Look, the first thing to say is the Tories are so weak in the national polls. They're on 20 percent, 21 percent. Anything is possible. I mean, we haven't really seen numbers like this since the spring of 2019 when Theresa May and the Conservatives were in meltdown. And of course, unlike then, there is no Boris Johnson waiting in the wings. So, you know, yes, the Conservative uh, Party is in freefall. However, this far out from an election, uh, MRP polls, which are really big opinion polls, uh, you know, they don't really have as much power uh, as they might do a month out from an election. So take everything that you're hearing with a pinch of salt. But make no mistake, the Tories are the Tories are basically collapsing. And to be honest with you, Patrick, I'm not sure where the floor is mm -hmm. in the Conservative vote anymore. I mean, seeing them on 21, 22 percent. I, mean, I don't know how low this vote is going to go. All I know is millions of people out there in the country don't really like this Conservative Party. They don't really like what it stands for. And they're looking for something different. They, yeah, they are. And, and I hear a lot of noises when, when Richard Tice and people like that are asked, well, hang on a minute, you're just going to open the door to Labour, aren't you? Their response tends to be something along the lines of, we don't care, the Tories need to be obliterated and then there needs to be a, a reinvention. Um, do you think that this right-wing war that we're seeing at the moment will essentially lead to a Conservative destruction and then like a phoenix from the ashes, a, a new version of it being formed? I think we're at the beginning of a prolonged ideological, uh, political, civil war on the right of British politics. Mm. And I think basically what's, what that's going to be about 
is defining what is the new conservatism for the rest of this decade and the 2030s. Because if you look around the world, Patrick, from Donald Trump's strong numbers in America to Marine Le Pen's strong numbers in France, to Georgia Maloney in Italy, to the Sweden Democrats, mm. to what's going on in Portugal and Spain. It's only the British Conservatives, which are the centre-right party that is basically collapsing. And there's something wrong with our brand of conservatism. And of course, we all know what that is. They promise lower immigration, they promise a self-governing nation, they didn't mm. really deliver on that. So I think what we're going to end up seeing here is a very intense battle over the soul of British conservatism. And I suspect at the end of that, we're going to have something, somebody that looks a lot different from what we've got at the moment. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and just to, to flip it, just to talk a little bit about Labour. I saw just before I came on air, actually, I mean, the way The Guardian expressed this was four in five Labour voters uh, support Keir Starmer. Another way of looking at it is that a fifth of Labour voters don't support Keir Starmer, isn't it? I mean, how much trouble is Keir Starmer in when it comes to his own base here, you know? And what, what reflection could that have at a general election? Well, look, Keir Starmer isn't setting the country on fire. I think we all know that. There's no mass public enthusiasm for him. His net leadership ratings aren't particularly impressive, especially compared to previous opposition leaders like Tony Blair, for example. Um, but look, he's doing better than Rishi Sunak. And in politics, that's really all that matters, especially in a two-party system like ours. You've just got to do better than the other guy. And I think, look, here's, here, I wrote about this this week, Patrick. Even if Keir Starmer and Labour get into power, here's a prediction. I'll leave your, your viewers to ponder yeah. this. I think the Labour government, the incoming Labour government, will be one of the most unpopular governments that we've had for a very long time, for the simple reason being that on all of the big issues, you know, the economy, no growth, high debt, immigration, Labour doesn't really have a plan. Uh, Israel, Gaza, the divisions within the Labour Party. You look at where Britain is going over the next five to 10 years. Lots of Conservatives will tell you in Westminster they want to lose the election because whoever inherits this mess is going to be very, very unpopular. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think Keir Starmer himself will be a very unpopular prime minister very quickly because we can already see he doesn't really have that mass public uh, enthusiasm behind him that the previous opposition leaders and prime ministers did. Now, yeah, interesting. More unpopular than the Tories are now, you think? I think there's a very good chance, actually, that the Labour Party would probably come in or maybe in the high 30s, you know, 40 percent maybe. And I suspect very quickly uh, they will run into some big problems. They won't be able to resolve the illegal migration crisis. They won't be able to lower legal migration. The economy, as we can see in the forecast, has got low growth, high debt, very expensive debt factored in for the next five years or longer. It's going to be very difficult for Labour to show meaningful progress. Public services, we've got £20 billion more of cuts coming into public services over the next few years. I mean, you know, to be blunt, Patrick, and not to be too depressing, but if you think Britain is broken now... Just wait and see what's going to unfold over the next couple of years. Matt, look, thank you. What an absolutely fantastic political roundup covering a whole variety of different topics there from the man himself. It's Matt Goodwin there, pollster, academic. Thank you very much.